Greetings, Sim Captains, and welcome aboard the X Plane 11 default MD 80. It's quite likely that either you're new to X Plane or have been ignoring this aircraft for a long time and just got curious if you're checking this video out. But it's actually for a default aircraft, uh, very well rendered. It's got quite a few interesting little features that are uh, kind of above and beyond for default honestly but that said it's got a few weaknesses in sound and accuracy in the default FMC so uh, main selling point this thing is very easy to fly very fun and we can start it up very quickly so uh, first place we're gonna start up is just like any other on the overhead panel We're going to be looking at this overhead panel in columns and rows. In our left hand column we have a power engine and in the right we have pressurization, air conditioning, bleeds and some other features for the most part. Starting out here, we're going to establish power with the battery. I'm going to talk you through this, so if you are wanting to, you can be in the sim, listening to the sound of my voice as I guide you to each piece of equipment, or you could alt-tab your way back and forth between them, or you could watch the whole video and hope you remember it. So we're in the overhead on the left-hand column. We're in about the third row down here the right hand side of this left column there's a switch that looks more like you'd stick a screwdriver in it that is our battery switch we're going to turn that on next you just scroll up past the overhead past those fuses and in the top of the left hand column right where it just goes onto the roof is a ground service electric power panel the lower of the two switches switches on external power so we're going to turn that on now uh, you can see the external power comes on and is immediately available. Move back down to the main part of the overhead panel. Next thing we need to do is connect uh, the bus tie on that external power. You may have noticed that we got a blue light a little left of where that battery was in the third row of the left column. Uh, that's the external power available. Click the switch on the left, turning on the bus, and the switch on the right. Next, we need to turn on the fuel pump. We're going to move down to the fourth row, the next one down. On the far left, it says Start Pump. Click that to on. Now we're going to start the APU, so back to the uh, third row where that battery switch was. Move over top of the battery switch. It says master off run start. This is actually your APU. There's kind of a square around this area. Everything in there is APU stuff. Uh, it can be a little aggravating if you're used to Boeing looking for where's my APU and you know this switch just says master. That it is. So uh, as we toggle it, if you look at the two dials above this little APU square, we have an exhaust gas, that's for the APU, and a uh, RPM. So here we go. Let's hold down the master start. I like to hold it down because I'm sure that's probably how it actually works. Even if you just click it to run, it does start up. And that would be one of those accuracy pieces where the default is not quite on par with some of the uh, you know, payware level aircraft. Alright, just to our left in the same row, we'll notice another blue light came on. That's because our APU now is power available. And we're going to turn on its uh, left and right bus, just like we did for the external power. Alright, now uh, moving back to the right with those APU controls, same row. You can see above where we started the APU with the master switch, there is a switch that says air. 
it's currently in off. And there's on an air conditioned cooler. I'm going to switch that to on. I'm not quite sure what the air conditioned cooler actually does. Um, I don't know if that pumps even more air over to the cooling packs. I'm, I'm really unclear as to what that does. But we're going to leave it on. That's what the checklist says. Next, we're going to turn on galley power. Move straight to your left in the same row, in the third row, left column. And kind of by itself, it says galley power. Click it on. All right, I'm going to take my viewpoint back out. We're moving down now to the fifth row, which is the last row of switches in the left-hand side. In the bottom left corner, which is the last switch in the bottom left corner of the whole overhead, uh, we're going to turn on the no smoking sign. Uh, if you want at this point, you could put on the seat belt sign, but odds are um, we're either j somewhere in the boarding process or it could be on. We'll turn it on now. Next, moving just to the right of the no smoking seat belt sign, we have a little meter. It says heater. And then to the right of that says meter, select, and heat. Uh, it kind of looks, if you toggle through it, like you're just selecting what that meter does, but you're actually turning on heat. So, scroll down just enough that you can see the enunciator row under all of the uh, rows. If uh, we were going to call this a row, I would call it row 6. And uh, if I turn that back off, you see we have pedo stall heat off. If I flick it back to captain, which is where it should be, that goes away. So uh, leave that knob set to Captain. All right, next, uh, moving a little bit to the right, we're still in this fifth row. We have airfoil, engine, and windshield heating for anti-ice. Uh, the windshield, anti-ice, and anti-fog work together. Checklist says as required. I just turn it on because under the impression window heat is almost always on, or at least the anti-fog would probably need to be. All right, uh, there's some checklist items that are unnecessary because this is not fully rendered for everything. So the next thing we're going to do is flight director switches. If you're familiar with the Boeing, they're in a very similar location. The uh, mode control panel here our autopilot switches are still located at the top of the panel in the center. You can see a FD off on both sides and the switch is repeated in, in this version again not the most accurate thing in the world. You switch one you get them both. You may have also noticed on the uh, panel for the pilot and the first officer just to the right of the primary flight display is an enunciator that uh, came to life. So I'm going to turn the flight director back off. You notice this enunciator is completely blacked out. We'll flick it on. And this is going to tell us uh, pretty much what the autopilot is up to. On a Boeing, this would be listed at the top of the primary flight display just above the artificial horizon, but here it's off to the side. And I'll be honest, I actually think I kind of prefer this location and it having its own little frame display. All right, next thing, we're going to turn on our position lights. They are not in the overhead like a Boeing. We're going to go to the FO's position. And just to the right of our mode control, we have a little panel of lights. So we're going to take the position strobe light, switch it down to just position lights out on the wings. Um, we're skipping some of the pre-flight steps that you would need if we were actually going to have a trip like setting up the FMC, dialing up ATIS, I'm just leaving the pressurization at standard uh, 2992 right now, but you know you would want to set the altimeter, and let's just check one thing, uh, it's 2992, let's roll it up, Oop. get on there, 2999, let's go see if the FOs, it did not, so you will need to manually switch both of these. I did notice a neat feature flying this around the other day. 
if you don't scroll it and you click on the adjustment knob, it goes back to standard, 2992. And let's go see, the FOs also snap to standard. That's interesting. When you manually adjust it, they don't align together. When you hit one to standard, they both go. All right, next we are still attached to the gate. All right, all doors and hatches are sealed, and we are going to play with those later because there's some really cool little features on this. But for now, if we're actually departing, it's time to get rid of the gate. Um, this is the auto gate plug-in, and this Phoenix scenery pack is set up to use the auto gates, so we have one there. You only need to toggle the brakes, and that's going to go away. Very quickly, I'll show you where the brake is located. If we go to the pilot seat, look down to the left, you will see the tiller. And in the center of the tiller, parking brake, pull to engage. Also, you may have noticed the uh, yoke isn't there. You press Y to hide it. I just had it out of the way so we can see for our setup a little bit better. So let's go back outside, and we're going to kick off the brake. Goes our gate. Lovely. You can hear the bell the best from in the cockpit. Alright, the gate is retracting. The next thing we need to do is open the crossfeed valves. I'll be honest, this one took me the longest to find by myself because I'm stubborn and didn't just go to YouTube or the internet to find it. Uh, in the center pedestal here, you've got your FMCs, the throttle quadrant your radios just like normal and then go to the very very back um, it's not even obvious glancing at it that the crossfeed valves are here but this gray handle on the left and the one on the right are the crossfeed so just click them they look like sliders but you just click them crossfeed valves are open while we're here you might note that this is where your uh, auto brake is located. We'll come back here later. So the cross feeds and the auto brake are at the back of the center pedestal. Alright, next thing we need is the hydraulic pumps. This one's also kind of hidden. Uh, and you can see it's noted up here on that enunciator, hydraulic pressure is low. Jump over to the FOC. Look down where your left knee would be, just underneath the clock and beside the FMC. There's a hydraulic panel. We've got three dummy switches and one that works. Uh, and you'll notice the switch is actually set up a little different. It looks kind of pointier on the end. That's the one we want. So click this one on. And the hydraulic warning has gone away. So hydraulic pumps are on. Now it's time to disconnect the ground power. So go back to the overhead. Scroll way up past the fuses. In the left hand column, very top, 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 before we just hit the roof. External power, switch it off. Going back to the overhead in the third row, you notice our external power available light has gone out. Oops. Flicking. Guards, I don't want to flick. Uh, we're going to turn off the left and right because it's no longer connected. Alright, uh, next thing, turn on our anti-collision, we're about ready to push and start. So back to the FO seat, right there at the end of the autopilot equipment, all of our lights, anti-collision on, there we go, we have a rotating beacon on top and beneath the fuselage. Jumping back in, uh, we need our fuel pumps on at this point. So in the one, two, three, fourth row, right where we had our engine start pumps, and we have our starters. On the right hand side, left column, fourth row, you have fuel tank pumps. So switch left. Notice we got both the forward and aft just by clicking one of them. Turn in the center, also forward and aft come together, and the right. All fuel pumps are on. Now we're going to move over, staying in that same row, left column. Turn the uh, ignition selector 
on, and we're going to switch, uh, use A today. Air conditioning supply, uh, we did turn on the APU air, but I never turned on the air conditioning, so everyone's melting back there. Uh, and if you're wondering why we're starting the engines at the gate, there's a very neat feature, and I do have a reason. I'm, I'm not just skipping a step here. We're going to start the engines at the gate. So uh, we're going to go engine start. I'm going to start the left engine first. Holding it down, you can see the pneumatic pressure is dropping. Held it for a few seconds. It should be spooled. Go back to that throttle quadrant underneath the throttles on the left hand side. The black knob is the fuel for the left hand engine. Drag that fuel cutoff up. And looking at our gauges now, we can see it is spooling up. Okay, we are back on the overhead, and now we're going to start the right engine. Hold down our starter. See the pneumatic pressure dropping as it spools. You can hear it starting a little bit. And we're going to jump back down for the right hand fuel cutoff. Drag it up to on. we go. That one's coming up. Alright, now we can turn off the uh, starter. So we're back in that, what was that, the fourth row over by the start pump, the uh, starter switch. We can just flip that back to off. Our air conditioning supply can be turned on. So this is our first time doing something in the right-hand column. Go to the right-hand column. We're going to look down to the third row. In the center of that third row are two switches. We're going to flick them down twice, two clicks to the bottom position of auto. There we go. Now uh, you can see the supply duct pressure move. Alright, this time we're going to set some flaps and we've got something interesting here. It's on the FO side. Um, if, I, if I understand this correctly, watching a YouTube of an actual captain he said this is a dial of flap, and if I understand correctly, it would give any flap degree within that range, so it's not necessarily notched for flap 5, flap 10, flap 15. You could, if I'm understanding correctly, move this handle to any position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, to select exactly the flap setting you wanted if I understood it correctly. In the sim, it's uh, functionally notched when you toggle it. I have a joystick switch and uh, that's how I got my flap position there. Alright, so flaps are ready. Let's go back to the end of that center pedestal. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll wait to set those auto brakes. I am going to turn on the nose lights. The landing gear and the taxi nose lights are on the pilot side, the left hand side of the mode control panel. So let's turn on our nose light. We've got a dim and a bright mode. Our fasten seatbelt signs we've already turned on. Uh, we can wait on the other items for now. We're just going to get this thing moving. And here comes one of the quirky and fun features and also a great time saver for the MD-80. The uh, series is approved to reverse from the gate. Apparently this was actually done in practice for a time, but uh, 
was dirty and noisy and wasn't kept as a practice. So, watch the engines. We'll open the thrust reversers. Beautiful little clamshell. Again, very nicely rendered for a default aircraft. Uh, one of the quirky things, though, about pushing with reverse is you're going to have to go to an external view. Release the brake. Go, pushing back under our own power. If you're used to taxiing with a Zebo, or even the Airbus 320, or pretty much uh, anything other than perhaps a regional jet where the engines are mounted on the body, the uh, location of the main gear much farther back on the MD-80 series and as a result when you go to make a turn the uh, turning handling is just so very very different all right let's get a nice close-up on these uh, thrust reversers as they close beautiful again way better than you'd expect for a default aircraft Another neat little feature on the wing tips here. You might see this little circle. That is our retractable landing lights. For whatever reason, the plane boots up with these extended instead of retracted. I'm not sure the reason for that. The switch for them is right here beside the uh, taxi nose lights. And right now you can see they're in the center extended position. If you flick them down, those lights are going to come on. Uh, speaking of lights, MD-80 has quite a few of them. Let's go back to the FO's lighting panel by the MCP. You can see floodlights ground left and right. Let's turn those on. Back outside, you can see we now have floodlights illuminating, shining down from the center of the fuselage. And uh, I always find these very interesting when you're on the ground. You see an MD-80 on approach or climbing out because you've got these body lights aiming down at you. It's just unique. It's not a very common item. Okay, other lights we've got here. Wing and nacelle lights. We can turn those on. Uh, wing lights are not that uncommon, but one of the neat things about the nacelle lights is if you are in these rear rows, you can uh, actually look out your window and into the engine. And we've got one more light that's not located where you would expect it. So let's go back to the overhead panel. We're on the overhead right hand column. Do you remember how I numbered my rows in the diagram? I guess I was calling this the third row. Top of the third, bottom of the second row. We have on the far right hand side logo LT. That's your logo light on the tail. So let's turn that on. Go back out. We've got our classic American Airlines logo lit up now. So now we've got all of our lights. Uh, I guess the last thing to talk about, I'm not really going to do a tutorial for you right now on the default FMC, but if you've been using the far more complex Zebo, this one it is much simpler for you. You hit flight plan, you can actually click here in the scratch pad and you'll get this pop out. You can, uh, in the corner, click this square to pop it out actually into a window which is neat. You can take it over right beside your SIM brief and type in the whole routing from there. Or you can stay in SIM, click in the scratch pad again, start typing in all of your data. Uh, quite honestly, it's fantastic to be able to type it in.
Uh, the main weaknesses of this FMC are it's just a little quirky in its ability to calculate the climbs and descents. I mean, it works, just uh, you, you, I don't feel like you can mess with it as much as the Zebo or the flight factors and still have it uh, do what it's supposed to. The more changes you make mid-flight, the more likely you are to get it confused. But uh, there's, there's no performance to set up, so in, in many ways it's just a fast fired up and go. So if I had not been talking you through this whole setup, we could have started up and pushed away from the gate um, in less time than it would have taken you to align your uh, nav gyros in pretty much any of the payware aircraft. Alright, we have a few electrical items to get out of the way and the uh, checklist I've been using has not been exactly clear on when these things should happen, but there's a few things we need to do here. We have the engines running, so we're going to go up here to the second row. You can see under the red guard, uh, not like don't open the red guard, but the next switch down is a left engine generator. Turn it on. Under the red guard on the right is a right engine generator. Turn those on. You can see the loads moving. I'm going to turn off the APU bus in the next row down. I'm going to set the bus ties to auto. And then the uh, DC bus, I'll, I toggled it off camera earlier, turn off the DC bus so that you are not draining the battery. We can actually turn the battery off right now without affecting anything. I'll leave it on. And at this point, we can shut down the APU because we are running on the engine power. Alright, we have dealt with the basics, and so now it's time for a tour of the features. Alright, from off camera, I've shut down the engines and put us back on APU power. I just wanted you to see how to get all of that electrical set up. Um, I want you to see now some of the neat little things. First, uh, I mentioned the pilot's window. I believe I mentioned that earlier. Opens. Uh, it will not open in flight, but it will open here on the ground, even with engines running. The FO's window does not move. Uh, another bonkers quirk, but this is a real thing on the MD-80, is this mirror. That compass does actually move. It's not a fixed image. And <laughs> the first time I saw this, I thought perhaps it was some here and the somewhere here in the cover it was reflecting. The compass is actually mounted on the roof above the first officer with all the letters and numbers reversed to be read in the mirror. It's a uh, it's a crazy feature. I have no idea why the standby compass didn't uh, get a place in the panel like everything else. So maybe in all this dead space there's actually enough uh, avionics they just couldn't get it in. But uh, system works, it's just bizarre. There's a mirror for the FO that does not uh, does not flip up in the sim. And there's the captains. Alright, we did the windows, we saw the crazy mirror. Let's go back and check out our cabin. door handle, nice bifolding door. The cabin from here looks pretty good. Uh, it's good from afar and kind of far from good. If you get closer, it's not a very high resolution, but uh, it is enough immersion to feel like you're actually in an aircraft. It's always a little disappointing to have an aircraft with no cabin. The galley has uh, both port and starboard doors and you open them just by clicking. A little quirk of this aircraft is you can click these in flight and they will open. And the plane will not depressurize, which is bizarre, but that's the way they programmed it. So let's get both open. I've actually been in the pilot seat uh, looking back, and when that door is shut, a click region with the little hand and the pointer finger will appear here, and you can't tell that it's the door. It looks like 
maybe you're going to interact with these fuses and that's not the case uh, you can actually run the door through the window so you've got to watch when you're in flight you don't go oh, what does this do because you will be opening your door at cruise all right let's go back into the cabin now it's a fairly long walk back here so I'm gonna cheat I've got a seat set up back here by the rear galley the door in the rear galley is not rendered to move actually it's fairly hideous texture when you get close to it but uh, I mean the placement of everything is is accurate I actually the last time I was on an MD-80 uh, I, I think this was my seat here got to watch the galley and everything from this location. It's actually kind of a nice ride because the, uh, the American Airlines MD-80 I was on was obviously built before American Airlines was smashing as many bodies into the plane so the seat felt larger and wider and uh, other than being aged was quite nice. Alright, we've arrived at my favorite feature this rear bulkhead door is not immediately obvious it does something but there is a click region and it opens uh, I believe we're outside of the pressurized area of the aircraft at this point and that's why the door is so thick and then you see the retracted air stairs one click and they fold out and this is just the coolest thing you can walk out of your aircraft and onto the ground not many other things you can do that with. Look up inside. I'm going to use the reverse right now. Um, it's going to kind of bottom out at a certain point. Oh, we haven't hit it yet. I think because we're, we're descending to the ground. Regardless, there's a point at which it doesn't. Yeah, see, it doesn't want me to go any farther. Uh, but if you want to walk away from the aircraft, hit C, which unlocks the camera, and you can proceed wherever you feel like it. Very nicely rendered aircraft, actually. Uh, fine details in the landing gear. It's more just that texturing. If I'm not mistaken, this aircraft was actually developed for X-Plane 10 and just sort of ported into 11 and I think that's why it was you know the latest and greatest perhaps in a previous version of X-Plane and now it's good it's just not quite on par with everything else uh, we have one more thing to play with here these cargo doors are gonna open so let's go back inside on the overhead panel in the right hand column second row we have under this dead space uh, three switches for cargo doors. Flip those open, and jump back outside. You can see the cargo bays are rendered. With, uh, nice little textures of containment nets. One last nice feature is the engines do rotate and I'm gonna cheat and we're gonna start the engines from the outside. so that we can see the fan blades rotate. And that does bring us back to one of the drawbacks of this aircraft, the sounds. You notice no matter where we go, the engine drone is about the same on the exterior. Uh, the cockpit is quite quiet, but th that actually is quite sensible. The engines are so far away, we're fairly isolated up here. Um, with the real pilots I was watching on YouTube said it's almost like a, a, a glider, particularly if the engines are throttled back because just so little sound actually makes it forwards. Alright, 
Well, I hope we've piqued some interest for you and helped you to find your way around the cockpit of the X-Plane 11 default MD-82.